I think it's really nice to be able to move away from the browser and kind of relax and have it be a minimalist experience that I can just focus on when I'm writing. Hey, this is Evan from Design Bros. Today we're gonna to be talking about 10 apps to improve your productivity and the functionality of your Mac. If you like that kind of thing, be sure to subscribe while we dive into our first app, Flotato. So really often there's a few tabs that I'm using all the time in my browser, and I've always thought it would be really nice to kind of move them away from the browser just to be able to stay focused. And when I'm switching between mission control, it's really nice to have a separate app for that. Flotato solves this by turning any website into an app. Once you open it up, you can choose from a bunch of different presets. I mean, immediately I'm getting a ton of inspiration here. And all you have to do is you just click get. So I'm gonna do that for Twitter here. And it immediately puts the app into your applications folder. So I've been using the Google Docs application for a few days now. And I, really, I think it's really nice to be able to move away from the browser and kind of relax and have it be a minimalist experience that I can just focus on when I'm writing. So like all these apps, Flotato is totally free. However, they have a limitation of one app open at a time, which I think is totally fair for what you get. All right, our second app is going to be self-control. Self-control will system-wide block websites for you. Once you've turned it on, you literally cannot turn it off even if you delete the app. So to be honest, I am a bit addicted to certain websites like YouTube and Reddit, and this tool has been saving my life, seriously. Self-control is completely free and open source, which is really awesome to see. And they even have a cool additional feature here, which is an allow list, and it does kind of the opposite. It blocks every website on the internet except for certain websites that you add to the list. App number three is Flow. I don't use this as much as I used to, but about a year ago I was doing a lot of Pomodoros for a drawing Fiverr gig that I was doing, and this was really useful. So Flow is just a Pomodoro timer that sits in the menu bar in Mac OS. Flow will count down from your typical 25 minute work period and then five minute break. The only tip I have for this one is you can, uh, if you go up to the settings here, you can change the flow duration, the break duration, and you can also see your scores and statistics if that's important to you. Fourth app is Craft. If you haven't heard of this app already, it's a very streamlined note-taking experience. It's very similar to Notion if you've used that before, actually. The basic folder organization on the left here and the browser-like tabs make for a very streamlined experience, in my opinion. I could make a whole video about Craft, but uh, to get to the point, it's a native Mac OS app, and it has some really nice features that make it great. Okay, so my tip for this app is actually the email sharing. So if we go up here to share, and then we go to export as, and then you click email, it will copy your entire note as an email. So now I can go to Gmail and then copy it right in. And it's a very beautiful email now. I've always wanted to make a newsletter, so this could be a really cool option. App number five, Dashboard. I just stumbled upon this app the other day on the App Store and I really like it. It is basically an app for outlining ideas. So jumping in, I can immediately start typing up my project here and then start filling it in as you see me doing now. And if I change my mind, I can rearrange it by indenting or outdenting or even drag and drop. I really like the idea of working sideways versus vertically. And I find this is really important for me to visualize and see ideas. If anyone has an app like this, but with checkboxes, that would be even better. Knew me. About six months ago, I was on a trip with friends and we afterwards we were trying to figure out who owes who money. And I found Numi really helpful for this because I could quickly convert currencies, so like British pounds and euros to USD and then add it together and then be able to visualize everything with variables. Uh, after I did all the math, I can quickly copy it by just clicking the results and then send that through chat. On a similar note, you can get the time, convert imperial to metric, and so on. I highly recommend Numi. Productivity app number seven, Anki. I've been trying to learn a second language for a little while now, and trying to remember hundreds of words is really hard. Anki is essentially a flashcard app, but it uses an algorithm to try to guess when you're about to forget. All you need to do is create a deck and start adding cards. Anki will do its best to guess when you need to see the card again. Whether you're trying to learn a new language, studying a complex subject, or just trying to remember birthdays or dates, Anki will change the way you learn forever. 
App number eight, Grand Perspective. I am obsessed with what my storage is being used by and Grand Perspective will grid everything up and kind of show me a visual of where everything is. So lots of software will cache a bunch of data and typically it'll just leave it there. Oftentimes I'll forget it's doing this until I literally run out of storage mid edit. It is super annoying. So it's really nice to see what is taking up my space and I can delete it. Ninth on the list is hidden bar. Quick tip in Mac OS is you can hold command and you can rearrange icons. So to use this app, all you have to do is twirl open the little triangle here and drag your icon past the line. This is a cool tiny little app that does what the name implies and basically hides icons in your menu bar for a clean minimalist look. All right, so finish off the list, we have Mackie for number 10. Uh, I don't even understand why macOS doesn't include this by default, but it's really, really useful and very easy to use. All you have to do is hit Shift Command C and I can see all my history right here. If I had to choose one app from this list, it would be Mackie because everyone can benefit from being able to use clipboard history. So my only tip for this app is if you go to preferences, I recommend turning on paste automatically uh, so you don't have to do Command V afterwards. Mackie is pretty simple. So if you're looking for more advanced features, there are other tools like Clippy, which is free as well. All right, there's been quite a lot of information here, but I hope all of it was useful for you. And hopefully you can be a little bit more productive and improve the functionality of your Mac. Don't forget to check out the description below to see the list of all the apps that I've listed here. And while you're down there, be sure to subscribe so we can keep making videos like this one. And if you're still here, be sure to check out these videos that are on your screen right now. All right, I think I'm done, I think that was it.